Ark, we are here. It is time for yet another episode of Regroup Phase. It is our Wednesday episode. That means we go over spoilers and previews and all the lovely different things that are coming out of Shadows of the Galaxy, preparing us for absolute devastation and destruction in set two of Star Wars Unlimited. We have, I believe it's eight, eight previews to go over. We have a piece of art. We have a stream recap talking about some of the mechanics of the game to go over. Lots of fun stuff for Shadows of the Galaxy as we move ever forward into set two Shadows of the Galaxy. If you haven't checked out the previous episode of Regroup Phase that I posted literally Sunday night about the PPG 5K in Florida, please go check that out. It should be linked either at the end of the video or in the description. But without further ado, once you're done with that, you can come back here and we can talk about Shadows of the Galaxy. Our first card preview of the week is a continuation of what we talked about last week. They revealed the full crosshair card. He's an interesting design. Doesn't follow the Bad Batch specifically, but should be an interesting card for Imperial Trooper decks regardless. We have Crosshair, following orders. Four cost, command, villainy, ground unit. Two power, six health. Imperial, clone, trooper. Action, two resources. This unit gets plus one, plus zero for the phase. Action, exhaust. This unit deals damage equal to his power to an enemy ground unit. It is an uncommon number 87 out of 262 in SHD. Crosshair does not have a bad batch trait on it. Crosshair has an Imperial trait on him. That means that he is specifically the version that has followed him breaking away from the bad batch and leading the elite trooper unit that he does uh, close towards the beginning of season one of the bad batch. This is actually a very, very good card. I like it a lot because it, it, it has the Imperial synergy. You can work it with Tarkin. You can work with anything else that gives you uh, tokens to your Imperial units or attacks off your Imperial units, such as the TIE Advance and the Snow Trooper Lieutenant. He's a trooper, so he tags off of trooper cards like General Tag. Has an interesting stat line being a 2-6, especially for 4. And he has the ability to pump himself, which can effectively be used as a quote-unquote a real true soft pass rather than just a pass in the game because you're doing something but it may not necessarily be what your opponent is wanting you to do in the exchange of alternating activations and then him being able to just deal his damage to an enemy ground units as an action to exhaust him is pretty cool it sticks some experience tokens on this guy with tarkin or with tag or with the tie advanced do something that makes it so that you can get a bunch of power onto him. He's a great target for Overwhelming Barrage, especially if you can continue stacking the experience tokens on him. Then you can use his effect to eliminate a unit that you may not have been able to do otherwise, or just attack into your opponent's base to deal that extra damage to potentially get closer to winning the game. We're going to do these previews in the order that the mechanics were revealed to us initially. So we're going to have Bounty first, then Capture, then the new mechanic Smuggle, which we'll talk about very heavily in the first Smuggle preview. So with that, our first Bounty card is the Cartel Turncoat. It is a one cost cunning heroism space unit, two power, three health, underworld vehicle fighter, Bounty, draw a card. When this unit is defeated or captured, your opponent collects its Bounty. This is a common number 195 out of 262 in S. HD. Very powerful for its stat line. One cost two three. It's a space unit. It's not necessarily hard to get rid of, but harder than a ground unit would be at the same value for power, health, and cost. But because it is a one cost, it has to have a drawback. And the drawback is, is if you're, when your opponent defeats this, they will draw a card or captures it. You actually want your opponent to capture these more than defeat them, because at least if you can rescue it while captured, you can get it back. But then that also means potentially another opportunity for bounty. So there's trade-offs with the way that this card works. This card wants to be aggressive in the main manner of getting two of these on the board round one and being able to attack with both of them at round two all as quickly as you possibly can. I don't know how good this is going to be. I see the potential and I see the lines. The downside of your opponent drawing the card when they defeat this is what's really holding me back. But we'll see. This is we're very early on in the previous season for Shadows of the Galaxy. We'll see what happens with this as we move forward. Our next card here covers a portion of the capture mechanic. We have here Unexpected Escape. This is a one cost vigilance trick event. Exhaust a unit. You may rescue a ca captured card guarded by that unit. 
It is an uncommon number 76 out of 262 in SHD. First things first to notice, that's Kylo Ren. This is the scene from Force Awakens where Rey is able to escape from the chair by mind tricking the storm, the Daniel Craig stormtrooper, and Kylo Ren has returned to find out that she is gone. That is the unexpected escape. Exhausting unit is actually something we're normally used to seeing with cunning, but it is this is vigilance, which is interesting, and it does allow you to rescue one of your captured units. So for example, if you have Mando and you've played the pulse rifle, which we talked about two weeks ago, you capture the unit, put it underneath your Mando, your Mando, and you haven't attacked yet. If the opponent plays unexpected escape on your Mando, you exhaust it, and then they can re rescue one of the captured cards, which is something that you have done that action. This is something that's probably going to be played in at least Vigilance decks to be able to get their units back, but also being able to exhaust a unit is very good for controlling your opponent's board space as much as it is for cunning. But this has the added aspect of being at least a decent sideboard card if you know your opponent is going very heavy on capturing units, which I do believe a lot of decks are going to try to at least incorporate some mechanic of capturing your opposing units because of the fact that it is one of the main mechanics of this set. As we get on and we, we grow with more sets, it might be less important to play anti-capture tech, but this will at least be something fun that a Vigilance deck could play that allows them to stall the opponent's advance and also rescue their own stuff. So interesting card. So this next section, this next specific preview is going to be longer than the other previews, but because it introduces a new mechanic called smuggle. This is a very interesting mechanic. So we're going to go over the card line by line like we normally do. We'll talk about smuggle, then we'll talk about this specific card. We have here the Vigilant Pursuit Craft. This is a five cost Vigilance Space Unit, three power, five health, vehicle transport. It has Sentinel. Smuggle seven resources vigilance if this card is a resource you may play it for its smuggle cost replace it with the top card of your deck this is a common number 65 out of 262 at shd so smuggle is an alternate deployment or play cost for a card that is a resource in your resource area people have been talking about how they'd love to be able to get their resources back or be able to do something that allows them to play cards from the resource area smuggle is the mechanic that will be doing that so for five cost and just a normal vigilance aspect check you can play the vigilance uh, pursuit craft as a three five with sentinel from your hand but if you pace if the, if this card if you resource it because you didn't need it but you need it later if it's in your resource pile you can smuggle it for seven resources and uh, again a vigilance aspect check and you get to play it from your resource pile so this gives you the option of playing something for the mid game or for the late game, depending on when you need it. It is a three, five Sentinel. It'll survive one, maybe two attacks, depending on what your opponent's attacking it with. And it is a very interesting design for this specific car. This is the Shadow Caster, by the way, which was piloted by, I can't remember the name of the character from Rebels. It was a friend of Sabine who was voiced by Gina Torres, but Asajj Ventress also flew one of these Lancer class patrol craft, I believe is what it's specifically called. And you get to use uh, the Ventress version of this in Star Wars X-Wing. And the reason why I know that is because I own it. I think Smuggle is a fantastic mechanic. The problem that I'm seeing so far with Smuggle, and we'll go over this as we see some other cards, is, is that the smuggle cost is almost always higher than the actual cost of the card. In other games, what will happen is you'll have a card that has an alternate casting cost or an alternate play cost, and it's either lower with very specific requirements or higher to make it so that you have use of that later or free later. Whereas this, specifically, you're paying five, so you can get this on round four, or you're paying seven, which means you can get this on round six, but technically you can play it, uh, you can pay the smuggle cost with itself. So for example, if you have seven resources on the board, you exhaust the Vigilant Pur Pursuit Craft in your resource pile face down and six other cards, you get to play it exhausted and take the top card of your deck and put it face down exhausted. Remember, units and resources always come into play exhausted unless the card says otherwise. For example, Super Laser Technician. The being two cost higher for this stat line, I understand it doesn't take a card from your hand, it takes a card from your resource pile and you're not losing resources doing this, but this cost me doesn't really fill me with a lot of confidence in the mechanic as it stands right now with this one card. There are a couple of cards that are really good smuggle cards. This one, in my opinion, is not, but it is a cool looking spaceship.
Next, we have another smuggle card, but this card specifically has an effect when smuggled. We have here the Privateer Crew. This is a two cost command only ground units, two power, two health, underworld. Smuggle, six command. When played using smuggle, give three experience tokens to this unit. It's an uncommon number 113 out of 262 in SHD. A two cost for a two two isn't crazy. It's not the greatest card you're gonna see, but this is where the smuggle cost, I think, actually does help the mechanic because it has an ability to become a 5-5. Five five. Sure, it's still a below power and health for its cost. But again, because it's coming from your resource pile and not from your hand, you can place this down as one of your early resources. And then when you have the six resources, you can drop this into play, get the experience tokens onto it and be able to attack with it on the next round with a 5-5 five, five that your opponent was not expecting, given potentially the cards that were in your hand or on your field. The best case scenario for smuggle is doing something your opponent doesn't expect, which is kind of what smuggling is about. You're taking supplies, people, whatever, from one place to another, and the opposing forces have no idea what's happening. We saw this a lot in Star Wars Rebels with Hera, who would smuggle supplies from planets to other planets that need either uh, resources for rebel, rebel bases, resources for refugees that are trying to escape imperial oppression and just trying to get resources to their own base like chopper base hera is really good at smuggling things with the ghost because it's a badass ship privateer crew very interesting i like the art on this i like her with this is obviously a blaster rifle but it does kind of look like a shotgun this is an interesting card and i think utilizes the smuggle mechanic much better than the previous card that we saw however the next card is probably the greatest example of smuggle that we will see yo dog we heard you like Energy Conversion Lab, so we put it on an event so you could use it more than once per game. We have Timely Intervention, a one-cost command tactic event. Play a unit from your hand. You must pay the cost. Give it Ambush for this phase. Smuggle, two resources, and a command. Common, 129 out of 262 in SHD. For one resource and the card from your hand, you can ambush any unit from your hand as long as you have the resources to pay for it. But if you put this in your resource pile at a later point in the game for two resources, including, again, you can use the timely intervention itself face down as a resource. So you're only paying one additional resource in order to be able to play this timely intervention and then the cost of the unit you're trying to ambush out. You get to ambush out a unit from your hand. This is energy conversion lab on steroids because you can use it more than once per game as long as you have it yes it does give you an additional cost whereas energy conversion lab doesn't but where it does better than energy conversion lab is you're not paying five health to do this and on top of that there is no restriction it's not six cost or less any card from your hand that you can pay for timely intervention it's boom you've got an ambushed unit out and it can go into any deck that can run just command it's a fantastic card this card is nuts and absolutely is worth playing in any command deck that needs to use it that needs to use this specific type of effect unless you already have a lot of ambush units anyway but there are a lot of other units that can utilize the ambush effect to great effect that don't already have it throw this with a k2so k2so and energy conversion lab is already one of the best combinations of ambush you can use with that card for sabine specifically steadfast battalion is another really good one that you can use for this and your opponent's just not going to expect seeing the two cost unless they're really really prepared for the deck but being able to do something like that without presenting the energy conversion lab on board is going to be one of the greatest benefits to timely intervention and i'm excited to see what players can do with this card both smuggled and not smuggled our next card does something different with Smuggle. We have here the Hotshot DL44 Blaster. One resource and aggression only upgrade attached to a non-vehicle unit. Smuggle for three resources and cunning. When played using Smuggle, attack with the attached units. It gives you plus two power, but no health. It is an item and a weapon. It is a rare number 174 out of 262 in SHD. So for one resource and aggression, you give one of your units plus two plus zero as an upgrade. However, for its Smuggle cost, three and cunning you can attack with the unit that you attached it so long as it can attack it has to be ready it has to be a legal target for the attack hot shot gives you two different ways of being able to play this card regularly for just the bonus or effectively a different way of using surprise strike you get less power out of it initially but more power out of it as long as your character survives and then this also procs on other things that go off of when you play upgrades such as the mandalorian leader card this is a very interesting design because you can play this in a cunning deck with 
without having to play it at all. And all you worry about is playing the smuggle cost because the smuggle cost is an alternate cost for playing the card. You ignore the regular cost, including its aspect for the aspect check for aspect penalties, and you only worry about the smuggle. So you can play this in just aggression and never smuggle it, or you can play in just cunning and never play it for its regular cost. The options are available, and that's something that we're really going to be looking forward to looking at coming into the next set because we're going to need to be doing more than one thing each time we take an action. And if you're using this in a deck like the Mandalorian, where you get to be able to exhaust an, oppo an opposing unit based upon playing an upgrade for the round, you smuggle it in, you get the upgrade, you exhaust a unit, then you attack with the unit that has been attached with this blaster. And that's effectively three things for the cost of doing one. And that's fantastic. That's what we really want going forward. We want to be doing more things with our actions than just playing one card, doing one thing and passing it over to our opponent. And Hotshot DL44 Blaster is the perfect opportunity for doing that. Our next card is given to us by the Unlimited FFG Twitter account. It is a heroism card and it is a filter effect like we've seen before. We have here, this is the way, a two cost heroism Mandalorian event. Search the top eight cards of your deck for up to two Mandalorian and or upgrade cards. Reveal them and draw them. Put the other cards at the bottom of your deck in a random order. This is an uncommon number 253 out of 262 in SHD. We have this lovely piece of art here. Fantastic. Uh, Kyle Petchok on his Twitter account actually showcased the full art piece. So we already know that the hyperspace of this card is going to be absolutely nuts. I'm going to have to pick up a play set of them right as set two drops. But... This is very similar in the vein of Recruit, which we just saw have some high level representation in the Florida 5K from PPG. It's similar to Prepare for Takeoff, Mon Mothma, uh, Grand Moth Tarkin, so on and so forth. To, uh, a two cost being able to draw two Mandalorian and or upgrade cards, two total, not two of each, is gonna be very interesting for decks that rely on Mandalorians or heroism decks that rely on upgrades. And I think Mando himself might actually be able to run this to try to smooth out the curve if you don't get anything in your first round of plays. But I think one of the most interesting and important aspects of cards like this is, is that it has to be viable enough to replace what you're doing in order to be able to be used. So Mon Mothma is used in a lot of Han command decks right now because you can pull her off the top of your deck with Ewing Reinforcement, which loses you nothing in terms of the tempo because you're already playing Ewing itself and you're very rarely ever playing Mon Mothma herself as your two drop for a turn. Whereas with something like Recruit coming out of Boba Fett Cunning, excuse me, Boba Fett Command, you can utilize your extra resource you get leader side to be able to recruit and pull a card that you need that will help you uh, continue to win the game. So a card like this closely matches a card like Prepare for Takeoff, where it's an event, you're using your action for that activation, and you're getting potentially two cards to be able to smooth out the rest of your hand. This might be good against something like Control or even Midrange, where you might have a step or two to be able to deal with what your opponent is dealing or take a break from pressing the advantage or just starting off your match with being able to pull those cards you need. But if you're going up against aggro, it's going to be really tough to utilize something like this. So maybe you could run a couple of these main board and side them out for the aggro matchup or put them in the sideboard, expecting aggro each time and side them in when you're going up against something like a slower mid range deck or the control deck. You still have to be aware of the way that your opponent can interact with your board and do the removal. But this is at least an interesting enough card because of what it can pull for the Mandalorian specifically that I think it might might be valuable to the inclusion. We'll definitely do a bunch of testing with this once the set actually releases. We have one piece of art here that will showcase that's part of a new spoiler strategy we saw last week with Crosshair. We're seeing this way with a new character. So this, for this video this week will show you the art and we'll tell you who the character is. Next week we'll go over the card as they drop it. So we have here... Dr. Ibezan, in his Moss Eisley appearance with Panda Baba behind him, they asked us specifically who it was. Obviously, we know who this is. Props to uh, Ice Cave Radio for pointing out that his first name is Cornelius. When I looked up to check the spelling of the name, that's what came up. So Cornelius Evazan, Dr. Cornelius Evazan, 
I'm hoping that the subtitle for this card is doesn't like you either. I think that would be a very fun nod to that scene in A New Hope. This is going to be one of our underworld dudes, probably leaning more towards cunning, but could be aggression because our Cantina Braggart was also aggression and styled very similar to Ponda Baba in the back here, even though it was a different alien. But this is lovely art, very representative of these two CD characters in the hive of scum and villainy that is known as Moss Isley. On April 17th, which was a Wednesday, FFG put out their FFG Live talking about the third mechanic in Shadows of the Galaxy, which we talked about a little bit earlier, but we can go into some clarifications in this, which is Smuggle. But we also got a little bit of coverage of Bounty and Capture. Our three individuals representing FFG, specifically Star Wars Unlimited, on this stream are everybody's favorite community engagement specialist, Xander Tabler, senior game designer Jeremy Zorin, and game designer Ryan Serrano, who's also known as the rules guru, I believe. I believe that information is correct. Lots of fun to talk about with this stream so we're going to get right into it they did start in order with bounty capture and then going into smuggle specifically so beginning with bounty they gave us a quick rundown of the effect and jumped into that first preview we saw of the cartel turncoat ryan does clarify that the bounty reward applies to the player responsible for triggering the effect by defeating or capturing the bounty so effectively in twin sons if the second player eliminates a bounty that's on the third player's card it doesn't go specifically to any other player other than them it goes to the second player they triggered it however if you bounties are inescapable if you defeat your own unit with the bounty the opponent still gets the benefit of what's happening and that's in 1v1 but in twin sons if you defeat your own unit with a bounty on it you get to choose which opponent gets the effect so there's an interesting level of politics that can come into twin sons when it comes to bounties if my opponent drops a wanted on one of my units and i need to sacrifice it with say a palpatine effect or something else in order to be able to deal some damage, I could sacrifice it and choose the fourth player in the pod to get the effect of the resources, either because they're my ally against the other two players or because their resources are already ready and you don't want them to get extra resources. So you just go, cool, you get the resources, except you already have full resources and therefore you can't ready resources and I still get my bonus effect and we're good to go. The, the strategies are unlimited as it were. Next, we have the capture rundown. We already all know what capture does. Captured card is considered leaving play for effects that triggered off of units leaving play. So it's effectively the same as waylaying a card back to your hand. It's not being defeated, but it is leaving play. So your Bubble Fett stuff is going to trigger. Anything else that triggers off of units leaving play will also trigger. And that's fantastic. We do get the, the complete coverage of Smuggle, which is a resource-based effect that we talked about earlier. Smuggling makes resources resourcing decisions a lot easier because that is an effect that allows you to play it later so you don't lose as much. As we did see, the smuggle costs are higher than the regular costs of the card, but that does take into consideration the fact that you can use the card you're smuggling out as a resource in order to be able to pay for its effect. So with timely intervention, you are still technically paying two, but you're paying with the timely intervention that's going to replace itself and one other resource. So effectively, only one resource. It's just not coming out of your hand. That's a very interesting design decision for the way that they have Smuggle. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Smuggle going forward and how careful they are with these types of effects because they can get out of hand. Magic the Gathering has a lot of effects like this, similar to Adventure and Fortell, so on and so forth, that make it so that there are lots of extra power coming into play from outside the game. And there are lots of strategies outside of the hand there are lots of strategies that do play off of playing cards from outside your hand. And while they feed into it, I think that Star Wars Unlimited is probably going to try to be a little bit more conservative with power levels when it comes to cards being played outside of just the resources from your hand. So we have a bunch of chat questions. Do smuggled cards enter exhausted? We talked about this a little bit earlier. Standard rules apply for all cards unless otherwise stated. So yes, if a unit is being smuggled into play, it will enter exhausted as all units enter exhausted unless stated otherwise. It, the card that comes off the top of the deck also comes into play exhausted because it is a resource being played and nothing says that it comes into play ready. So that gets that ahead of time. We have here, does the original aspect of the card count for penalties for using the smuggle keyword the answer is no the smuggle cost is just the text of the card this is what we talked about a replacement effect with that hot shot laser the hot shot blaster 
because it's an aggression card you would know if you're playing that from your hand you would have to worry about the aggression aspect for aspect penalty but if you smuggle it you worry about the cunning aspect on the smuggle cost rather than the aggression because it's an alternate play cost can you smuggle an exhausted resource we talked about this yes smuggles an ability on the card regardless of orientation where does a capture card go when rescued? Captured units re-enter play into the arena where they were from, exhausted where it would normally go. So if you capture a space unit, that goes face down underneath the card that captured it. And then if that unit leaves play or the captured card is rescued, it goes back into the arena, space arena, as it's a space unit, exhausted because units that re-enter play or enter play are exhausted. I know it seems stupid to have to re-say this over and over, but it seems to be a rule that people don't clearly understand, even though it's in the rules text. It is what it is. We just try our best. But the other aspect that does end up happening is because these captured units when rescued are coming back into play, they will trigger when played effects on other cards that check for things that are being played or if that unit itself has a when played effect so be careful about what units you choose to capture if you are the capturing person and make sure you pay attention to your units that are being captured if you can get those multiple when played triggers uh any smuggle cards with no aspects in the cost this was a question that was asked and it did not receive an answer it's to be determined this is something that we'll probably see previewed the last thing here on this list is ryan says there will be cards that can put multiple bounties or repeated bounties on enemy units and not every bounty card is single use so we can see something that a static effect can be placed onto a unit through uh, from another unit let's say there is another bubble effect card that's uh let's give it all the same stats but a different effect so it's a, th a three cost three five boba fett card that when it when played it puts a bounty on two different units and you get to choose you get to try to knock those units out let's say the bounty is draw a card because that's a static effect with the keyword it doesn't necessarily require a card to be put in play but probably should just for tracking purposes so we might see individual uh, creators come up with tokens like we've seen for sentinel and for han's res resource things and other things that we've seen a lot of acrylic token creators come up with some really interesting stuff but the other thing that i think is coming out of this is that we might see an upgrade that comes into play puts a bounty on it and when the bounty is claimed you get a reward and the upgrade goes back into your hand or the upgrade goes onto a different unit that's in play that would be an, an interesting design space for something for bounty which will be interesting going forward as we see what more cards come out of the set we've only seen a couple of basic bounty effects wanted the upgrade cartel turncoat the unit but there's a lot of space an unlimited amount of space not really but it's it's the the gimmick right to be able to design four things that come up with this game so that is the live stream the live stream will be linked in the description below if you want to check out any of the details it was a quick 22 23 minute video which was really fun to watch it was cool to see their joy of talking about what's coming out with set two set two i think is probably going to be one of the most exciting sets at least until we get to set three and then obviously every set thereafter is also going to be equally exciting right because that's what happens with games anyway super excited fun stream and that's all we have there and that is all she wrote for this week, this episode of Regroup Phase. We got our big smuggle questions answered. We got the smuggle specifically revealed. We got some cool cards. The crosshair card finished and revealed. Next week, we'll get the Evazan card revealed. This is the way, which is going to be very important to me, specifically an interesting card going forward. Smuggle, Bounty, and Capture are going to inject a lot of fun into the game, but we're going to end up having to see once more cards come out, if they will be as effective in the meta as things that we've seen for set one. With all that being said, had a lot of fun discussing these things. I'm super excited about this set. There's so much flavor coming out of it. And that's one of the really big things about Star Wars Unlimited is, is that while it is a card game, it is a good card game and it's a competent card game. It's a card game that is dripping with Star Wars flavor. And that's what Star Wars fans have really wanted for a long time. I enjoy Destiny. I love the LCG, but the flavor that drips out of Star Wars Unlimited and the accessibility minus obviously the sh the sell out of the set and the drip feed of set one hopefully those things get fixed as we move forward into the rest of the sets accessibility of the game itself still is unparalleled compared to pretty much any other star wars card game that's ever been printed so lots of fun stuff coming out of this this week hopefully we'll get some more cards a lot more cards previewed preview season should be coming up here very very soon i know we have another stream coming up on uh, today it actually should have happened uh shortly before this video happened i believe that is the case 
and I believe that is the la that would be the last Star Wars Unlimited stream for April. So we'll see the May schedule as it comes out. May 4th is coming up. I'll be going to a 1K uh, out somewhere in this area that should be fun to hang out with and, and talk about. I'll try to get some coverage of that, but I'll at least do a tournament report once it's all finished, which you won't see for a couple of weeks. But that's it. We're done. I'm out of information and I've talked for way too long. So thank you very much for joining me. Remember to like and comment on this video. Share it with your friends. Check out the playlists that I have. Subscribe to this lovely YouTube channel for all your Star Wars Unlimited needs. Remember, I am on social media. Check me out everywhere. You can find me at Ryback Stun. We do have memberships and super thanks on this channel. Memberships get you access to my face as an emote. It seems it's not across YouTube, unlike where it is on Twitch. So I'll have to work in figuring out how that exactly works. But at least you can use my face on my channel to respond to dumb things that I say that you think might be dumb. Let me know in the comments below what those are. And that is it. So with that, I will see you in the stars.